Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be going over how to scramble every event for cubing at home and the WCA. So, the WCA has 17 events, and cubing at home has 22 events, which are the 17 WCA events plus 5 extra ones. For those who don't know what cubing at home is, make sure to check it out at the link in the description. It's basically a series of really fun online cubing competitions. There are prizes, and there is really exciting commentary from myself and Derpy Cuber, among other people on Twitch. So as of the time I upload this, the next Cubing at Home competition will be on June 28th, 2020, so make sure to tune in for that. But anyway, getting into this video, since anyone can compete in Cubing at Home from anywhere around the world, it's really important that everybody's solving on the same scrambles, and that everybody knows how to scramble the events they're doing properly. So I'm going to be giving an example of all 22 events, I'll leave timestamps in the description so you can check out just the events you're curious about, or you can just watch the whole thing if you want to learn about every event. For each event, I will be going over notation, although for certain events the notation is very similar, such as for 6x6 and 7x7, so if you don't know the 7x7 notation, I would recommend watching the 6x6 one first. That's to say, even though I'm leaving timestamps for each event, you might need to refer to other events to get some background knowledge before you move on to the more complex ones. So for each event, I'll be going over the orientation you have to scramble and to start, the notation for the event, and I'll be giving an example of scrambling that event. And before I continue, I do want to say that every event does require that you scramble correctly, except for 6x6, 7x7, and Mega Minx. Since these events have really long and complicated scrambles, it is okay if you mess them up, but it's still important that you put in an effort to follow the scramble and not just do one move or something like that. You still need to try to follow the scramble, but if you mess up, it's okay. You don't have to redo it. Another thing I should mention is that if you happen to miss scramble on any event, say it's 2x2 two two and you ended up with this scramble and you realize it's wrong, instead of just going in and solving this and then re-scrambling it, I recommend you do a couple extra moves without looking. The reason for that is that sometimes missed scrambles can be pretty close to the actual scramble and you don't want to be giving yourself any extra information. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's begin. So we're going to start with n by n's, which means we're going to start with the smallest one, which is 2x2. Two two. So for all n by n's, you're going to start with white on top and green in front, or if you don't have those colors, you'll start with the lightest side on top and the darkest adjacent face on the front. For 2x2, two two, the only moves you need to know are R, which is the right side clockwise, U, which is the upside clockwise, and F, which is the front side clockwise. You also need to know that prime indicates counterclockwise, so R prime would look like this, U prime would look like this, and F prime would look like this. Finally, a two after a move indicates that you do the move twice for a 180 degree turn. That move can go in either direction, so U2 would look like this. Notice that I did do it clockwise, but it's the same thing as doing it counterclockwise. So with that, I'll put a scramble on screen so you guys can follow along. And as you can see, the scramble matches the drawing. Now we'll move on to 3x3. Three three. So 3x3 three three scrambles are going to be the same for 3x3, 3x3 three three, three one-handed, and mirror blocks. The only extra thing you need to know from 2x2 two two is that there are three extra moves here. There is an L move, which is the left side clockwise, a B move, which is the back side clockwise, and a D move, which is the down side clockwise. Notice that a U and a D prime are in the same direction. That's because you treat it as if you're facing the face that you're turning. Now for 3x3, three three, you start with white on top and green in front. For mirror blocks, you start with the thickest face on the top and the largest corner in the UFL position, which means you're going to have the biggest corner right here. With that, I'll do an example. And as you can see, this does match the scramble. Now we'll try that on mirror blocks. Mirror block scrambles can get a little bit wacky, but make sure not to lose your place. And there you go. The only other thing to know for 3x3 is that for 3x3 blindfolded and multi-blind, 
you will also have wide moves at the end of the scramble, which makes it have a different orientation than it would originally have. So for example, you might have an RW, which means you turn both R layers clockwise. You may also have an RW prime, which means you turn them both counterclockwise, or a UW, UW prime, etc. You can have any of the R, U, or F wide moves for three blinds and multi-blind scrambles. Finally, fewest moves is gonna be the same thing as normal three by three. The one thing to keep in mind is that every fewest move scramble will start and end with R prime, U prime, F. This is not a mistake. This is very much done on purpose as it affects the edge orientation of the pieces and basically makes it really obvious if you just reverse the scramble. Keep in mind if you are competing in FMC, reversing the scramble is not allowed. Moving on to four by four. Four by four is very similar to three by three in that you have the same U, R, L, D, F, and B moves but you can also have wide moves, like in three blind. So you can have something like UW, which means to turn both U layers clockwise. You could have UW prime, RW, RW prime, FW, and FW prime. Same thing for UW2 or RW2 or FW2. Keep in mind that this does not mean turning the inner layers. This means turning both layers. Anyway, I'm going to do this scramble a little bit faster, but hopefully you can follow along and you can always slow down the video if you need to. And as you can see, this scramble matches the drawing. Now for 4x4 blindfolded, this is going to be the same as 4x4, except at the end, you may have some extra rotation moves. So these moves can be X, Y, or Z moves, and they don't actually signify real moves. They just talk about rotating the entire cube. So to do an X move, if this is the U face and this is the F face, imagine an imaginary X axis going through it. A normal X move would be this way. An X prime would be this way. A Y move is this way a Y prime is this way, and finally a Z move is this way, and a Z prime is this way. Moving on to 5x5. Five 5x5 five. Five five is the same exact thing as 4x4, four four, um, except you can have double layer moves on L, D, and B as well. And just like 4x4, four four, you hold it white top, green front to start, and I'm going to go through this scramble relatively quickly as well. And as you can see, this one does match the drawing. With 5x5 blindfolded, it's the same thing as 5x5, except there are also going to be some three layer moves at the end. So you may have a three UW, which means turning the top three U layers, or a three RW, or a three FW, or three UW prime, three RW prime, three FW prime, or any of those uh, twice. Moving on, we have six by six. So six by six is very similar to four by four and five by five. The only addition is that you have triple layer moves. So you can have something like 3UW, which means you turn the top three layers, 3UW prime, 3RW, 3RW prime, 3FW, and 3FW prime. Or 3UW2, 3RW2, or 3FW2. So starting with white top green front, I'm gonna do this scramble.
And we got lucky. This does match the drawing. Next up is 7x7. Seven seven. So 7x7 seven seven is the exact same thing as 6x6, six six, except now there are also 3 L moves, 3 D moves, and 3 B moves. So starting with white top and green front, I'm going to do the scramble. And look at that, we got lucky again. This does match the drawing of the scramble. Okay, next up we've got Skeub. Now, Skeub is a bit of an oddity. It is similar to the end by ends in that you start with white on top and green in front, but the moves are very different. So there are only four types of moves, which are U, R, L, and B, and they all refer to one of four corners that you can turn around. So a U move is actually turning around this corner. So to turn it, you put one finger on all three centers, and then you can turn it this way for a U or this way for a U prime. An R move is around this corner, so same thing, three fingers on it, turn it this way for an R, this way for an R prime. An L is around this corner, L, L prime. And a B is around this back corner on the bottom. So that's gonna be a B this way, or a B prime that way. So now I'll go through this scramble pretty slowly. And as you can see, this matches the drawing. Next up, we've got Ready Cube. Now, this is not an official WCA event, but it is one of the bonus events for cubing at home. So for Ready Cube, there are only three types of moves. There are L moves, R moves, and X rotations. So L moves are around this corner. This is an L, and this is an L prime. R moves are around this corner. This is an R, and this is an R prime. And X rotations go this way. So you start with white on top and green on front as usual. For Ready Cube, I personally find it easier to keep it on the table, so I'm gonna do that for the scramble. And as you can see, this matches the drawing. So now we'll move on to square one. For square one, there are two possible scrambling orientations, which means orientations where the larger piece in the middle is on the right and the smaller piece in the middle is on the left. So there's this orientation and this orientation. The legal one is the one with the darker color in front. So in this case, that means red will be in front. So for square one, edge pieces like this are worth one and corner pieces are worth two and you count on the top and bottom layers based on how many edge and corner pieces go by this slice. And the scrambles are written in parentheses where the first number represents how far to turn the top layer, and the second number represents how far to turn the bottom layer. So for example, for this scramble, it starts out with four comma zero, which means we do one, two, three, four on top and zero on the bottom. And then we do a slash, which means turning this whole half of the cube 180 degrees, and that can go either direction. Next, we have six on the bottom, which means we do one, two, three, four, five, six, slash. 
Next, negative three on top and negative three on the bottom, which means we turn it counterclockwise, one, two, three, and counterclockwise, one, two, three, slash, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, but I will say the scramble out loud as I go. Negative three, zero, slash, two, negative one, slash, four, zero, slash, negative three, negative three, slash, negative one, negative two, slash, zero, negative two, slash, one, zero, slash, five, negative four, slash, and zero, negative two, slash. And as you can see, this matches the drawing. Next up is Pyraminx. So for this event, you start with green in front and yellow on the bottom. Or if you don't have any of those colors on your Pyraminx, the lightest color on the bottom and the darkest color on the front. So there are four body moves on Pyraminx. There are U moves, R moves, L moves, and B moves, as well as the four types of tips, which are U tips, L tips, R tips, and B tips. So as usual, a normal move like a U would indicate doing it clockwise, whereas a U prime indicates counterclockwise, and it's the same thing for all other moves. So anyway, let's do the scramble. And as you can see, this matches the drawing. Next up, we'll do clock. Now clock scrambles have a very specific order that they go in. So I'm just gonna walk you through this scramble and pretty much all the scrambles will be similar to it. So you can start with either side on front as long as you have 12 o'clock pointing up. And to start out, we have UR one minus, which means we put the UR pin up because it's in the upper right. And we do a negative one, which means we turn its corresponding dial counterclockwise once. Next, we put that down, put the DR pin up, and now we do DR3+, plus, which means we turn this three times clockwise. Next, DL5- minus means we put the DL pin up, turn that counterclockwise five times. Next is UL5+, plus, which means we put the UL pin up, the upper left, and we do one, two, three, four, five turns on the corresponding dial. Now we have U4 minus, which means we put both U pins up, turn four times counterclockwise, then R1 minus, which means both R pins go up, and we turn the right side counterclockwise once. Now D4 plus, which means we put both D, both down pins up, and do it four times clockwise. And then we have L6 plus, which means we put both left pins up and turn six times. Next, we have all three minus, which means we put all three pins up and turn any dial three times counterclockwise. Now there's a Y2, which means you rotate like this, so 12 o'clock remains on top. And you follow very similar moves, so I'm gonna go a little faster, U6. R2 plus D2 minus L4 plus all five plus. And now the final moves are going to be pins that you have to put up. So start with all of them down and then just put up the pins that correspond to the ones that you're told to put up. So in this case, it's the DR pin and the DL pin. And this is your scramble. Next up, we have Kibiminx or Kilominx. So there are seven types of moves on here, which are U, F, R, BR, BL, and L. The final move is a flip, which looks like this. Now keep in mind that doing a move twice is not the same clockwise and counterclockwise since it takes five rotations to go all the way around. So a U2 is different from a U2 prime. That being said, let's go through this scramble. BL2, flip, L, F, R2 prime, U prime, BL prime, U2, F prime, flip, 
R, B L, U two prime, B L two prime, U two prime, L two, U, B R two, U, R two prime, U prime, F prime, U prime, R prime, F, U prime, F two prime, R two, F prime, R two prime. And as you can see, this matches the drawing. Next up is Megaminx. For Megaminx, there are only six moves you need to know how to do. So for four of them, you hold your fingers here, gripping these three pieces. And those moves are R++ and R-. There's also D++ and D-. And the final move is U and U'. prime. So I'm going to go through this scramble rather quickly because the moves are pretty simple. And in this case, it doesn't look like the scramble matches, but I actually have a different Megaminx color scheme. So mine is fine if you check the scramble uh, according to my mirrored color scheme. And like for all the n by n puzzles, you start with white on top and green in front. One of the other unofficial events Cubing at Home has is the mini Guildsford challenge, which is just 10 events. And I've gone over the scrambling for all 10 of those events here, so just watch those if you're confused on any of them. And finally, we have face turning octahedron as our final Cubing at Home exclusive event. So unfortunately, I don't currently have a face-turning octahedron, so I'm going to pass it over to my friend Ben from Ben Puzzles, and he's going to give you a breakdown of how to scramble FTO. The image on the screen right now shows which sets of letters correspond to which layers. We first hold the puzzle so that a corner or vertex faces directly towards us as seen in the image. On the left is the front view of the puzzle, and the right shows the reverse view. Keep in mind that your color scheme may be different, but the same basic idea holds. We have four layers that are visible from this front view, which are labeled as follows. U for up, F for front, R for right, and L for left. As for the reverse view, we have the other four layers, labeled B for back, D for down, BR for back right, and BL for back left. Notice that BR and BL are labeled based on the front view of the puzzle, and hence will be the other way around when viewed from the rear. So this is BL, and this is BR, from this angle. White is on U, and green is on F for standard orientation and for scrambling. If this isn't possible for your color scheme, the lightest color should be on U, and the darkest possible subsequent color should be on F, as per WCA regulation. A letter or pair of letters by itself indicates to turn that layer in the clockwise direction. So for example, L means to turn the L layer clockwise once, and U means to turn the U layer clockwise once. Pretty simple. A letter or pair of letters followed by an apostrophe pronounced as prime indicates to turn that layer in the anti-clockwise direction. So for example, R prime means to turn the right layer counterclockwise once, and F prime to turn the front layer counterclockwise once. Again, just like with the 3x3 cube notation. Notice that since the layers have three-fold symmetry, no two-fold turns will ever be needed like on a 3x3 cube, and we will not see that notation here. Thanks for that, Ben. And with that, that wraps up all 22 events that we have at Cubing at Home. So hopefully now you know how to scramble all these puzzles. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. But that's about it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to join Cubing at Home, and I'll see you in my next video.